Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Trackman 44 here. Uh, today we're going to be ripping into and tearing out this old furnace. Uh, we're going to be setting a replacement furnace in place, and we're going to take some measurements, go back to shop, and then make up the uh, the material required to install the furnace. First order of business is to make sure everything is disconnected in a way in which you know you can use the material there to go back or adapt to. Like I've got the return air completely disconnected now. I've got all the screws out of the plenum, so now we're going to try to just drop everything out and uh, slide out because this one here happens to have bricks under it. So if all the screws are out of the plenum, the bricks are two inches tall, tall. So if I knock them out from under, it should be able to drop down and slide out. So. He's already recovered the refrigerant, so he's got to cut the refrigerant lines for me. And uh, he's working on the electric right now, disconnect electricity. But I'm helping out a buddy so he's taking care of the things that he can take care of. Sheet metal is the only thing on, on my plate for the day. Oh yeah, forgot. We got the gas disconnected too, that's quite important. stairway and we're getting old so we don't really want to carry extra, extra weight unless we have to. And this thing is caulked down. Okay, we'll get this thing out and up the steps and bring the new stuff down, clean up the area, and go back to the business of measuring up for new sheets. What we're going to do, we're going to go inside the plenum and take a look at what you may or may not see. This plenum here, or this furnace here, actually serves two stories of a three-story house. And so we have a short trunk line that goes to the north, and we have another short trunk line that goes to the south. Hopefully you can adequately see those openings. And then of course we've got another main trunk line that goes all the way up to the second floor. And if you can see up at the top of the reflection, it's going to turn and go to one end of the house. And of course the branch ducts will go ahead and come out of the ceiling up above. But uh, now if you really want to see how dirty the duct work was and how much dust accumulation is in, you can crawl up and just look down that trunk line and you'll see a lot of dust and stuff you know, accumulated on the bottom surface of that, of that trunk line. Uh, this one here, being a three-ton blower, probably doesn't have a tremendous amount simply because the velocity pressure inside that trunk line or these smaller trunk lines is going to be high enough. It's going to blow the dust right straight out and into the house primarily.
in, looks pretty good. Oh, it needs a little bit of duct tape, right? <laughs> well, actually, that's not right. We've got to now figure out what we've got to do to adapt this, the physical height and dimensions of this, to fit the top discharge of the evaporator plug. Okay, after thinking about it, even though the dimensions are fairly close, it's almost impossible to adapt that in and make it look halfway decent. So we're going to go ahead and fabricate a whole new plenum, probably a two-piece plenum. A simple transition up above and then something square to go into it, I hope. Now here we're on the back of the furnace, back of the plenum. So what we did is, we made, this is a fixed point. So we measured from the wall to this fixed point is one, 136 and a quarter inches. And now we've slid the furnace until it too is 136 and a quarter inches. That's going to give me one part of the plenum that's going to be straight up and down, and that's how I'm going to be able to get the true length of the single fitting or the two fittings to put together to make this work. The second thing we did is we measured from the, the chimney right here over, had to add for this offset, but it's four and three eighths inches. So I've got four and three eighths inches to this one here, but down here I'm seven and five eighths inches so that's going to be a several inch of an offset going that direction same thing up here we've got the dimension up here we got 27 actually it's 26 and seven eighths 26 and three quarters so this is 29 and three quarters so down here we actually measure 27 and three quarters so that's obviously going to be a two inch transition in that direction I haven't been to the front side yet, but I'm going to go ahead and draw this so that it'll be easy to put the dimensions to the paper. This is ultimately what ended up measuring out there, you know, alongside the, the chimney. We're going to go up with a 13 and a half inch tall, 20 by 20 flanged plenum. Quick and simple. That's going to be no problem at all. Above that is going to be a 10 inch tall transition that's going to take up the space between this new plenum box and the cutoff portion of the existing trunk line. So that open space there was 22 and a half inches. So if you know if you add 13 and a half and 10 and a half, you can come up at 23 and a half. Well, you lose an inch whenever the S slip dries up inside the other S slip. And of course, the drive tab is bent over to allow for the drive ears. So your totals have to end up an inch longer whenever you're making the, uh, the rough drawings or the, uh, the raw cuts on the material. So up above, this is an isometric drawing, or these are isometric drawings. And we're going to be making a 10 inch tall transition that's going to be um, 20 by 20 starting out to match the top of this plenum box. But the top of it is going to flare out in two directions, two inches one way, two and a quarter inches the other way, uh, to end up with roughly a nominal 24 and 3 eighths, 24 and a quarter dimension. That's got a little bit of a play to it up there because there are two S connections up at the top. And if, if it's a little narrow, if it's a little wide, I can invert the S's and I can actually adjust up to a quarter of an inch really, really easily uh, at that particular point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to eliminate that great big thing that I took out and make these two transitions to take up that space. Now I hated to do it, but I had to cut this video off right here simply because it was going to end up being way too long and I'd have to edit out way too much of the actual layout and fabrication process. And actually, I think it worked out quite well, you know, to get a to get to see a tear out and uh, a way that the way that I feel to measure. Now, not everybody feels measures the way I do. Uh, a lot of people have uh, many different techniques or different ways of doing it, but I just do what works well with me and has worked over the years. So, uh, at any rate, uh, you'll have to tune in and uh, catch the next one in the series. And this is Trackman 44, and I'm out of here, guys.